I've been asked to talk about the um, uh, probably one of the more memorable events uh, that is associated with me, and that is the uh, incident in Vietnam when I was an advisor with the Vietnamese Marines back in 1972, and that was the uh, destruction of the Dong Ha Bridge at a uh, tiny little village then of Dong Ha. Right at the end of March, I want to say around the 28th, uh, the enemy began their attack uh, in a massive scale, 200,000 North Vietnamese, supported by uh, tremendous amounts of uh, of any aircraft uh, weapons, uh, Zoo 23, 24s, uh, all of these are uh, known in the military. Uh, any aircraft, uh, SAM missiles, mobile SAM missiles, uh, virtually everything. When the attack started, my battalion, which was south of there, was immediately sent north. All of us were sent as far north as we could get. Uh, I was in the 3rd Battalion and we were told to go to Dong Ha and essentially await orders. We had no idea what was happening other than the fact that the fire bases uh, on both sides of us, north of us and west of us, uh, were being overrun. Uh, this was a shock in itself. We simply couldn't imagine the enemy attacking in such a great force. They hadn't counted on the fact that uh, the Marines uh, had been told to, uh, in the rough translation of the orders we received the previous evening, stand and die. That has a very clear, uh, a very uh, forward uh, element of uh, finality. Stand and die. Uh, the purpose of which was uh, do not lose this village it is too, too important. Well, when the attack came, the enemy quickly uh, moved to the north bank. We had a large bridge there, had, which had been built by American Seabees uh, when I was there the first time in 1967. And this was a very powerful bridge. It was built over strength to uh, take the heaviest of traffic, notably tanks, it became quickly apparent that the only way to stop them was to destroy that bridge. I called back to my uh, superiors and said, I must destroy the bridge. Uh, I remember very well, my superior officer was a Lieutenant Colonel Turley, and he responded back. He said, Ripley, I can't give you that kind of authority. You have to go all the way to core level, which was multi-division level in order to get that sort of authority to destroy a bridge. And I can't give you that authority. However, you got to do it. You have got to destroy that bridge. And he uh, offered also, I will send up what explosives I can find. I said, send anything, because we have nothing. So, having arrived under the bridge, as it turned out, the engineers that Colonel Turley had sent forward, had managed to get the explosives there. It's interesting to note that I had no idea how I was going to do this initially. And when I initially looked out over that river, the bridge, uh, the challenge was virtually overwhelming. I thought, my gosh, how am I ever going to get myself out there uh, as, uh, to say nothing of uh, carrying uh, what turned out to be at least 500 or so pounds of explosives. So I put a satchel charge over each shoulder and reached up and grabbed the beam as it, as it approached the south bank where I could actually reach up and then I began kicking my way through the uh, anti-sapper fence, a large amount of barbed wire concertina that uh, was in place. I would kick my way through it. The other advisor was uh, helping with, with that. He would pull the wire down while I tried to kick my way through. It turned out to be uh, not barbed wire, but what we call German steel tape, razors, razor wire. You probably have seen it. And it, uh, it really sliced the back side of my legs and uh, all the way up to uh, uh, almost to my belt line where I was wearing my uh, webbing. 
containing all of my equipment. And I also had my weapon slung across my back. Uh, not the right thing to do, but I wasn't uh, really at the best of judgment at the time. When I managed to get out over the fence, and I knew that I had a considerable ways to go to get from there out over the river to begin placing the explosives, <clears throat> I, um, I started along uh, burdened with the explosive plus my webbing and my weapon, which I had uh, erroneously uh, not taken off. And I began this long trip, and I had at that time been awake uh, and fighting, continuous fighting, uh, for three solid days and nights. No rest. Uh, you wouldn't uh, actually engage the enemy at night other than by uh, artillery and generally small arms, but uh, nevertheless you're awake and you're fighting. And so I was exhausted when I started. I also had not had any sort of sustenance apart from a sip out of my canteen uh, during those three days. Nothing, not even a tiny little bowl of rice that we generally had two or three times a day. So that my body was uh, run down, uh, I was very exhausted, physically exhausted, but I had a, uh, a tremendous focus on the mission, what I had to do in order to, in order to uh, stop the enemy. I had a tremendous focus on uh, the requirement, the obvious requirement that I do my duty, do it correctly, and uh, that I could be counted on. When I moved from there out over the river, despite this uh, commitment that I had taken, this personal commitment, my body seemed to be failing me. Uh, I was a fit individual, but because I had been run down over this period, uh, despite being very fit, uh, I was. I could feel that uh, this was going to be a very tough chore. And as I hand walked out, I began to rhythmically, uh, hand over hand, I would say, I can recall so clearly, Jesus, Mary, get me there. And this rhythm, uh, this simple little prayer, Jesus, Mary, get me there and over and over and over, and the strength came. It just came. It was uh, perhaps phenomenal. Uh, it's easy to explain, but it's not easy to understand, and yet it worked. For me, it worked. A perfect example of uh, faith in action and the result of... Uh, your faith, no matter how strong, assisting you in a very physical way, in a very tangible way, uh, when you really need it. Boy, did I ever need it. I had been, I had been raised uh, in the church, a very uh, faithful person, and I continue to be. But I never really made that association between prayer and and your faith, and the physical aspect of what it does for you. And I can't think of a better example than this. Not only did my faith permit me to accomplish this mission, to essentially get out over the river, swing my body uh, up so that I could hook my heels into the beam, and then muscle myself up inside this channel formed by two adjacent I-beams and then place the explosives in place, prime them, drop down, swing over to the next channel and make my way back and start all over again. 